because today we're going to put the fun in function. Good times. Good times. Okay? I'm going to give you a second here to think about this statement. And this statement is this. Rational numbers are numbers which can be written in the form of. Okay? Think about that for a minute. It's a one word answer to finish off that sentence. Okay? Think about it and we'll come back to it. Fractions. Yay! Love them. Okay? So, give me an example of a rational number. Hubby, where you been? Mm, I was just a little late. Okay, I am. I get it. So, well. Give me an example of a fraction. One over one, okay? Or I could just say simply one. One is a rational number because we can write it as one over one. Or we could write it as 17 over 17. Give me another example of a rational number. Two, same thing, right? Two over one, right? Or 34 over 17. Give me another example. Keep going. Keep going. Every, seriously. There are 6, 9, 12, 16. There's 21 people in this room. And you guys can't come up with a fraction? Any fraction? A half. A half is a rational number. Give me another one. Three fourths. Three fourths. Give me another one. If you haven't said anything, you better start shouting out fractions. One fourth. One fourth. Keep going. Two thirds, keep going. One sixteenth, give me a fraction bigger than one. Eight fifths, give me another one. Give me a negative one. Somebody else that hasn't said anything, give me a negative one bigger, or actually, it'd be technically smaller than negative one. Give me a small fraction smaller than negative one. Give me one. Anthony, give me a number bigger than 20. Bigger than 20. 21. Somebody give me a number that 21 doesn't get divided into. Four. So negative 21 fourths is a number smaller than negative one. Okay? Here's my question to you. Is 2.5 a rational number? Why? What fraction? Five halves. So is 2.5 rational? Yeah, it is. Okay. So any number that can be written as a fraction is rational. Okay. All right. We got that out of the way. That took some time. So this one's probably going to take a little bit too.
We are going to talk about rational functions this entire month. Okay? For the next four weeks, we're going to talk about rational functions. Okay? So we should know what a rational function is. If a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction, a rational function is a function written as a fraction. See how I made that connection? Okay. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as fractions. Rational functions are functions written as fractions. So we've got a function for the numerator. We've got a function for the denominator. But we have one extra condition. And that extra condition is q of x is not the zero polynomial. What does that mean? q of x is not the zero polynomial. That's fancy math speak for something that you already know. What is it that you already know? Remember, we're talking about fractions, and we're now talking about zero. What do you know about fractions and zero? What? Can't divide by zero. So what that's saying is that the denominator can't be zero. That's all that that's saying. Okay. Fancy math speak. So, some examples of rational functions. f of x equals 7 divided by x minus 2. h of x equals x minus 10 over 2. Uh, d of x is equal to 17x cubed minus 14x squared plus 42x minus 41 all over negative 13x to the 17th power plus, oh, 540. 42x to the 15th minus uh, 625x to the 7th minus 6024. Are those all rational functions? Yes or no? Two checks if it's a rational function. One, is it in fraction form? Are all of them in fraction form? Yes. Second check, any of the denominators zero? No. So all of those are rational functions. Okay. Are they pretty? First one, not so bad. Second one, super pretty. Third one, scared me. Yeah. Yeah. Our goal is to graph these within the next two weeks. That's my goal. My goal is to graph these things. Actually, my goal is to graph these by Thursday. Yeah. That's my goal. Then we'll get more complicated as we go along, but my goal. I would like, we, we should be done with all brand new concepts in two and a half weeks, which gives us a week and a half to study for the test. Okay. All right. So, but don't freak out. One, you've already done it before. Two, we'll break it down. I'll break it down nice and pretty for you. Okay. So, 
The domain of a rational function includes all real numbers except the x values which make the denominator equal to zero. Okay? So that's the two things that are included in rational or the domain. All real numbers except where the denominator is equal to zero. Now, when you're looking at domain, there are two things that you need to look for. The first thing that you got to look for is radicals. The nice part about this chapter is there are no radicals. We took care of those in the last chapter. Okay? So there's no radicals in this chapter. So we don't have to worry about that one. The second thing that we look for in domain is fractions. This chapter is 100% fractions. This entire chapter is fractions. And the reason I know that is because on the last slide, we just defined what rational functions were. Rational functions are fractions. This chapter is the rational functions chapter. 100% fractions in this chapter. Okay? When we give the domain, and you will have to give the domain for every function, okay? when we give the domain, we give it in a specific form. It starts with a capital D and a colon. D for domain. Okay? So it will always start like that. Then the very next thing is going to be all real numbers, which is the double, the double R. Then you will have some kind of a condition. And that condition is going to be where your domain is not possible, okay? where your denominator is equal to zero. Okay? So let's talk about what happens at those spots where the denominator is equal to zero. So let's go f of x. I'm going to define our function as 7 over x minus 2. The first thing that I'm going to look at, or the very first thing that I'm going to do, is I am going to set my denominator equal to zero because I want to find where those bad spots are. If you divided seven by zero right now in a calculator, depending on the style of calculator you have, you're either going to get error or domain invalid. Okay, those are your two options. It doesn't work. Okay? So we need to find those spots. So in this case, that's going to be x minus 2 equals 0. And then I'm going to solve. So that gives me x equals 2. Now, this solving, this is the condition that I was talking about up here. Okay? This x 
equals 2. That's the condition. But I can't have x be 2 because if I plug 2 into this function, I get 7 over 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. I get 7 over 0. So the domain here of this function is going to be all real numbers, but x cannot be equal to 2. Okay. So my question now is, what happens when x is 2? What happens, one on our graph, two, logically? Thinking back to your Algebra 2 days, back when you were doing rational functions, second semester, Algebra 2, last spring, what happens at x equals 2 on this, at this function, or in this function? Does anybody remember? It's not a whole. That's the last... That's our last component. Actually, no, I like That's our second to last component that we'll get to. What else could it possibly be? Anybody come up with it? The graph is like turning like just by two. Nope. Because it can't nothing can happen at two. Because if something would happen, like if my function were, were to be defined at two, I should be able to plug two into that function and get an answer. But I can't. Okay. Anybody remember? What? Vertical asymptotes happen when the denominator is equal to zero. Okay? So, let's talk what a vertical asymptote is. Okay? It is a line that the function... does not cross ever. Functions cannot cross vertical asymptote. Okay. Actually, the other one I don't have to say, so let's take this one. We'll take this one. That f of x does not cross ever. Second thing, on a graph, it is a dashed 
line. Asymptotes are dashed lines on graphs. It's got to be on the graph. If our goal is to graph these functions, it's got to be on there because it's a major important part. Okay? We find them in the domains restrictions. Or, I think we called those the conditions. There can be more than one. How do I know how many possible vertical asymptotes there are in any given function? What would I look at? Well, first off, before I even start that, so if we find them in the domain's restrictions, how do I go about finding them? Go back up to our original function. How do I go about finding the vertical asymptotes? What do I do? We did it in blue. Not solve for zero. How? When how do I but how do I get x by itself? Because I'm not doing I can't just do that. I I really have no idea what you're saying. No, that's Tuesday or Wednesday. What do we do? First thing, I literally wrote it out for you. Set the denominator equal to zero. That is how you find the conditions, which is how you find the vertical asymptotes. So as soon as we had that, that x was equal to 2 as a condition, then we could have easily said right here that the vertical asymptote is x equals 2. Because that's the conditions in the domain. Found the conditions by setting the denominator equal to 0. Only thing that I change with the conditions to get them into vertical asymptotes is I take out the can't be equal to. Okay? Now, what I would like you to do is I would like you to start a brand new separate sheet of paper. Okay? Because this brand new separate sheet of paper, not the back side of your notes, brand new completely, actually right now, rip it out. Rip out one blank sheet of paper. Okay? Because what you're going to do is you're going to put this paper is going to be your backbone, your guideline, your blankie, if you will, for this next four weeks. Okay? These are going to be the seven steps that you use in order to graph a function. Okay? So I would put this, steps to graphing a rational function, at the top of the paper in big bold letters. 
and there's going to be seven things underneath it. Okay? We'll fill up the page with the seven steps. Okay? So, step number one is we need to find the domain and any vertical asymptotes. The number of vertical asymptotes is the degree of the denominator. That's how many possible vertical asymptotes you can have. It's the degree of the denominator. So if I had in that last one, 7 over x minus 2, the degree of the denominator was 1. Biggest, biggest exponent on my variable. Okay? So there was one possible vertical asymptote. If I go back to... Come on, come on down with me. This one. D of x, how many possible vertical asymptotes are there? 17. H of x, how many possible vertical asymptotes are there? 0. What's the exponent? There isn't one, right? It has an exponent of 0 because it's gone. Okay? All right? So there's possible exponents abounding, or possible vertical asymptotes. What's the process that I use to go about finding this? Because that would be also helpful to have right in our steps, if this is going to be our crutch for this entire chapter. Well, I set my denominator equal to 0. That's all for that page for today. We'll add more to that page on Wednesday. Okay? But now we're back into notes. Okay? So example number one says find the domain, any and all vertical asymptotes, and use logic to describe the asymptotal behavior. That's what the function is doing near the asymptotes. And the end behavior. So our function is f of x equals 1 over x. First step says I need to find the domain and the vertical asymptotes. And to do both, I set the denominator, which in this case is x, equal to 0, and I solve it. Done, correct? Right? Did I solve that? x equals 0, solved. Got x isolated by itself, nothing else on it. Okay, good. So that tells me now I can give the domain. What is the domain of this function? <laughs> what is the domain of this function? All real numbers, but x cannot equal 0. That's the domain part. Second part was I need to find any and all vertical asymptotes. How many vertical asymptotes does this function have? One, because there's a condition in my domain, right? Okay. And what is it? x equals 0 is the vertical asymptote here. Now, the temptation is going to be there. I promise you. I've seen it a thousand times. The temptation is going to be there to write your vertical asymptote as just the number 0. Correct? We're going to want to do it. 
Because that's what it is, right? My vertical asymptote is zero. But what is zero? I mean, really, what is it? <coughs> hmm? What's zero? The number, right? Right? Right between one and negative one? Right? What are vertical asymptotes? Look up in your notes. What are vertical asymptotes? It's lines, right? So I have to give it in line form, in linear form. So it has to be x equals 0. Okay? Because otherwise it's not a line. Asymptotes are lines. You're going to have vertical asymptotes, you're going to have horizontal asymptotes, and you're going to have slant asymptotes. All of them need to be in linear form. So it has to be x equals 0. Okay. Then it goes on to say, use logic to describe end behavior, what the function is doing, or excuse me, end behavior and asymptotal behavior. Okay. So you want to do end or asymptote first? Doesn't matter to me. End? Okay. So when x is ginormous, okay, so if I say as x goes to infinity, what does my function go to? That's, what I, that's end behavior. The other end behavior is as x goes to negative infinity, what does my function do? Okay. So, infinity, is that a really big number or a really small number? Big. Million? Okay. So, if I put a million into my function, what do I get? If I put a million in for x, what do I get? Really small number, right? Positive or negative? Positive, right? Okay, let's go even bigger. A billion. Smaller number. Positive or negative, but still bigger than zero, right? Okay. A trillion. Smaller yet, still positive, still not zero. So, but we're getting closer and closer and closer to zero, right? The farther and farther out we go. Okay? So that, to me, would go to zero from above. So as x is going to the right, going to positive infinity, my function is approaching zero from above. It's getting closer and closer and closer to zero from above. If I were to draw that, as we get out here, it would be coming closer and closer and closer and closer to zero, but it would never cross over. Because okay? I can keep going. I can go to the next zero. I don't even know what the next zero is after trillion. Okay? But if I, it's still positive, and it's still bigger than one, or bigger than zero. Okay? So let's go the other way now, to the left. So now we're talking negative a million. If I put negative a million in, what do I get? What do I get if I put a negative million into my function? One over negative a million. So negative one millionth, right? Okay. If I put in a negative one billion. Go on a factor of 10 more. Factor of 100 more. Factor of 1,000 more. 3 more. Okay. What do I got? Negative a billionth, right? Trillion. Even closer to zero, right? From above or from below? Below, because I'm on the negative side. Okay. 
so that one's coming through like that. Okay. We said we've got an asymptote at zero, right? So now my asymptotal logic My asymptotal logic is going to say, so I got to come at zero from the left and I got to come at zero from the right. So as x approaches zero from the left, what's my function doing? And as x approaches zero from the right, what's my function? doing. Okay. You want to go from the left or from the right first? Positive or negative? I don't care. Negative first. Okay. So as I'm coming, so negative one, if I put negative one into my function, what do I get? Oops. I'll bring my function back. If I put negative 1 into my function, what do I get? Hmm? Negative 1, right? Okay. i got to get even closer. So if I go negative 1 half, what's 1 divided by negative 1 half? Calculator if you don't know. One divided by negative one half. Negative two. Okay, let's get even closer. One tenth, negative one tenth, even closer, right? One divided by negative one tenth. Negative 10. Let's get even closer. Negative 100th. 1 divided by negative 100. Negative 100. So my function is getting in like this, and it's going down like that, correct? So where's my function going to? What kind of infinity? Negative infinity. So from the left, it's going to negative infinity. Now let's go on the right side as we approach from the right. So like positive 1, we'll start at 1 and we'll work our way into it. Positive 1, putting 1 into that function gets me 1, right? Okay. 1 half. 2, 1 tenth, 10, 100, 100, 1,000, 1,000. So this one, as we get in closer and closer to 0, it's turning up. So where's it going? Positive infinity. Okay. So that's end behavior logic which is the left and the right side, and asymptotal logic, which is what the function's doing at the asymptotes. Okay. Some fractional logic for you. If I take some number and I divide it by a small number, the smaller that number gets, that's going to be a ginormously huge number. Okay. So what that means is if I take a number and I divide it by something going to zero,
That's going to give me infinity. You might as well just leave. You're packed up. You might as well just go. Okay? Okay? All right? Conversely, if I've got a number and I divide it by a huge number, that result is going to be small. So if I've got a number and I divide it by something going to infinity, then that result is going to be zero. Okay? Fractional logic. We'll pick up on that. Come on. 